Hey everyone, it's Mark from Cricket Bat Info, and I thought I'd do a updated cleaning video. Elliot E from the Discord server actually gave us a different tip for cleaning up all these red marks and that that is a little bit different to what I've been doing, so I thought we'd give that a go. Uh, but before I do that, I've got to get this uh, scuff sheet off. So this is the same bat I did the label change on. This is the Laver and Wood Ultra. So you can see here, I've actually added a separate little piece of clear tape over the top of the labor wound. That's because when they actually make these labels in the factory, they use the negative for the same bat that I've done a review on, where they basically peel off the labor and wood, leaving the outline, and then they actually put a layer of a color underneath it. I didn't want that to be torn up by the cricket ball, so I just put that over the top just to look after it. Now this bat has actually seen a fair few games this year. I think about nine games plus pre-season. We're going to go through seeing if we can get rid of these little scuff marks here. I'm not going to take this off. Uh, and also get rid of some of the markings all over the bat. So the first thing we've got to do is get rid of uh, the scuff sheet. So nothing changes with this part. Basically heat. Now I've got a heat gun and um, lift across and over the grains. With this particular one, when I put the scuff sheet on, I actually uh, did it the laver way where it, I trimmed the scuff sheet at the edges and then rolled the uh, edge tape over. So the scuff sheet doesn't actually go all the way over. So it's actually gonna come off quite easily, I think. So what I have here is a variable heat heat gun just off of eBay. So I've got it on a fairly low setting just to create enough heat for me to get rid of this, I'm not turn it up a tiny little bit. I don't want it to go too hot because the fibre will actually break away from this fibre tape. So this is about that labour prepared um, in the factory and I would have gone over the toe and the edges a little bit more. So I'm not, I don't think I'll be seeing any cracks or anything like that underneath it when we peel this off. Alright, so now that's come off there, I can put some heat into it. So this would be the outside edge coming up here and doesn't appear we got any cracks, so that's in good nick. Nothing changes with this part for me. This has always been, use the old terps to loosen the glue and then scrape it off. The terps is also quite good normally on all these little marks up here, so we'll go over those. So what I'll do is I'll now skip ahead to where I've actually taken off all this glue. So I've got all that, most of that sticky stuff off. I can feel a tiny little bit of tackiness there. Uh, but you can see here that a whole season and pre-season and we've got no real cracks. What I do have is up here a little bit of a crack here and that's more to do with when I rolled the edge. Um, I was basically knocking it and as it's not uh, rolled over it's actually split along the grain so that just needs a little bit of glue there. You can see here we've got a really good condition toe guard. Um, uh, Lavering would do, do a very good toe guard, it hasn't lifted or anything like that. So what we're actually going to use on top of that is this stuff Magic Eraser. So Magic Eraser is a type of foam that is just a normal foam. But at a microscopic level, uh, when compressed, it actually reacts a little bit like a hard abrasive. And it's very, very good for getting into these tiny little areas here and removing whatever you've got. So good cleaning product, but actually I've, I've realized, thanks to Elliot's insistence, it's actually very good for cleaning up cricket bats. So we'll give that a go. This one's just dry. Um, still do have some moisture on here.
So you see as I go over here, those marks all just come straight out. And how easy is that? Don't even need to go over it with the sander if you're not fussed, if the bat's in good condition. Look at that. So I haven't put, obviously you can uh, wet this a bit. I think he said you can use, um, he was using linseed oil, uh, but I'm just gonna go dry. And you can buy this stuff in cheap stores I found afterwards. I ordered it off eBay, but I think it was like uh, $5 for a big block of it. So it lasts you forever. So it's not actually damaging the wood in any way, but it's actually getting right into those little surface areas and uh, doing a really good cleanup job. And you can see there as it wears away, it just turns into dust. I will give it a go with the other thing he suggested, which was a little bit of oil. So we'll do a spot test on that on the other side. Uh, so what I've got here is my little attempt at bleached oil, which didn't work. And I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of oil on that just to create a little bit of uh, something on it. So we'll have a look if that improves its performance. And hopefully you can see there actually doing quite a good job. Look at it when we get over here, look how quickly that ball mark comes out. And obviously the tiny little bit of linseed oil is not going to hurt the back in any way. just thought I'd go over this sticker here with this slightly oil soaked magic eraser and it seems to be doing something. Um, seems to be a lot cleaner than before, as long as I don't go through the, the actual sticker and get oil onto the splice, it should be fine. So we'll see how that looks uh, when we return. Okay, so I'm back and I've finished the major cleanup of the bat and pretty much used only the magic eraser. So what do I think? I'm actually quite happy with how the stickers turned out. They've lost their really glossy finish, but it's really uh, reduced all the markings that it had before. Um, but all in all, it looks pretty good. As far as the face goes, it feels fine. Um, as you can see there, there's no cracks on that face. So that's pretty good. Uh, you can see here, we've got a tiny little bits of the marking still here. And a tiny little bit there for the most part it's all gone and on this edge I can see a tiny little bit of redness uh, but it's actually quite smooth so it looks pretty good I have finished doing what I promised to do on steaming that dent out you can see a little bit of it under the shadow and I did put get a little bit of glue in there uh, so the last part I couldn't get these dents here out they're quite deep uh, but I did get most of the dents out along the spine, so it's pretty good. It just needs a polish. Now, as far as the finish, I did find that the Magic Eraser didn't leave the bat really smooth. So I actually went over it slightly, and you can't see a lot of sawdust on there with some 400 uh, sandpaper, just to smooth it out a little bit, just a little bit of that just to give it a nice smooth finish because I did find particularly with the steaming here that it does lift the fibers a tiny little bit. Uh, if you do have that you can obviously go over some areas uh, if you think you can get more of the redness out but that's far more abrasive than what the magic eraser is. So I could do a little bit there and that area there. People have been asking how I put the scuff sheet on. So this is one of these English scuff sheets, uh, good quality. I have got a uh, trimmer, so I can get a nice straight cut there. And I'm just gonna line it up to that line there. So generally, make sure you've got no dust around, which is hard to avoid in the shed. 
So I'm probably going to fail at that one. Try and lift up one corner of the scuff sheet. Now with this particular application, I'm going to do very much what Lava does and just line it up with the edge because I'm actually going to trim it. So, okay, so I've put that on <coughs> and I'm getting all my uh, bubbles out. Now it's time to trim it. I had ordered a brand new Stanley knife that was supposed to be coming. It hasn't arrived. Now with this side here down at the toe, what I generally do here is lift it up again and then do my cut. And make sure that cut is not right up to the toe guard because you will get lift. Okay, so with the scuff sheet on, smooth out any bubbles. So I've got a tiny little bit of dust out there. I normally trim my edge tape just to one of, just above one of the strands. And then Take it down from that strand and down at the base so that you've got a nice straight line and just gently press it down. Okay, now don't wrap it up over straight away. First put your cut in and give it a bit of a curve because that's always going to catch when you put it in your, your cases and stuff. So if you can cut a bit of a curve into it, that helps. Okay, now as far as wrapping it over, generally I start down the bay, bottom and wrap that over first. And then I work my way slowly up the blade, rubbing it over. Until I get to the top. And with any luck, you got no bubbles, like that one. So there you go, that's the cleanup of the lather. Might put some at the bottom too, but we'll see. It's turned out pretty good from where she was. And um, yeah, that's had a season of work. And I've actually seen this in action. I haven't used it myself, but condensed middle with that edge position uh, but it's very big that's the ultra profile um, this bat I've seen absolutely cane the ball um, just amazing so there you go that's the clean up with the magic eraser if you choose to go that way you always do have the terps and the paper towels if you want to go that way and applying a scuff sheet. We'll see you later.